Booyah. Boom. Okay, so this is episode three. I think we're up to now, uh, and, and the episodes are going a bit longer than I was expecting. And we've got a we've got a clock ticking here, but uh, I want to. There's so much to talk about, as you can see. And we, so the next episode that I want to talk about, based on what we we're going through last time, is the creative process. And actually, I, it's funny. A YouTuber starts with the gadgets. Honestly, a lot of YouTubers yeah. start with the gadgets, and they figure out how to be good at using them later on. But you're you're from a writing creative background. And also, you've been disciplined to go through this commercial creative process. So, what I want to talk about in this episode is go through the typical commercial video creative process, and then to compare that against my very quick and dirty sort of process, and what you've learned trying to come into YouTube, and what you think the lessons that maybe you can figure out what the lessons for YouTubers might be. So, um, yeah, hang around and uh, you know, get some tips from a pro. I'm now. confused. I'm confused. Okay, confused. Okay. This yeah. is going to be good. <laughs> So, you're a creative, you're a creative guy. You're the, you wanted to be. You didn't want to sit in a great cubicle. You wanted to be creative. You know, screw being like me. You wanted to actually. I mean, I'm glad you know this is my escape as well. But so you're a creative guy. You got into the world of you know TV production or you know documentary production and whatever. So. What is the process that, uh, that, that when, we, when I turn on National Geo or History Channel and I, or Discovery Channel and I watch, a, I, I watch ah. a, a, a TV series there, how did that get to be on the screen? Was it someone just picked up a camera and thought, oh, geez, that looks good? How does that get on? Okay, um, I have to be very careful with what I say, I suppose. You have to be uh, very non explicit. We, we can make this all in terms of, I don't know, Playboy Channel or something. Completely I think when, when you're talking about in a commercial, in a in a commercial environment, yeah, we mentioned it um, previously. Yeah. We're we're talking about there's a lot of design by committee going on. Yeah. Okay. There are a lot of people um, statis statisticians. Yeah. There are a lot of those guys, the numbers fellows. They're all crunching them out the back, and they're saying, you know what, this guy's watch. The, these people are watching this type of show, and that did really well on that channel. So let's do exactly the same thing here, and oh. and they don't necessarily think about what the final product is they don't start with that they start with the numbers i can imagine so if you got like a hundred thousand uh views from one person slipping on a banana the logical next video would be having like three bananas and people slipping over on them yeah to triple your views yeah and and let's do like a whole <laughs> series of exactly that yeah maybe he can slip on an apple core next week creative See, what this could is, this possibly go wrong paid. So okay, so, so it can yeah. be a lot of different inputs. A lot of okay, need needs monkeys, need needs cats. Although not that that stops that happening on YouTube, frankly. But yes, well that that's so you have those that's people. literally how it happens, and it's it's all a little bit. Um, so do they come and ask you for look? We monkeys are big right now. I need I need a, I need a show about monkeys. Pitch me, come up with some proposals about monkeys. Is it like that, or do you actually get to come up with com original ideas of your own? Okay, two, two Fridays ago, I was at an event in yeah. Singapore yeah. where a big channel was asking exactly for this. Monkeys. That, that no, they, they didn't want monkeys. <laughs> but let's like just monkeys. say... Let's I want to watch monkeys. <laughs> commercial people. Monkey you're tennis. Watching, monkey monkey tennis. tennis. You remember the PG Tips commercials? You could have never-ending scenarios with monkeys. Seriously, oh, they're, they're apes, I know, but, but you know. Sorry. <laughs> I interjected. Um... No, I was, look, I was, they I was, were coming with something that they wanted. I was at this event. Yeah. Basically, what they did was they gave us the rundown. What's been, what's been doing well? Yeah. Um, for instance, they like World War II shows at the Who moment. Who doesn't like World War II? They, they gave us all of the information that they have, yeah. and they said, look, come all, go away yeah. and come back in a couple of weeks. So when I go back to Singapore after these are shot, yeah. I've got to spend a week writing up a whole lot of proposals for that. Yeah. And um, that's simply going to be based on what is viewing well for them, yep. what's rating well for them, yep. and we're going to try and come up with some good shows from that. So they don't necessarily come at it from, hey, you know what, I'd really like to see a show about um, geisha in, in Tokyo, yep. the, the dying world of geisha in Kyoto or something like that. Yep. Instead, they'll, uh, they'll come at it from what has already been rated before they try okay. and make something interesting but you know what there is, there is a parallel to that so in the youtube world which is that you can actually see sites like google trends and if you look up the google the, the youtube playbook for example yeah 
uh, I think even recently there were like 10 tips for, for being a successful YouTuber. And they say, look at the Google Trends and see what's yeah. popular and make videos about it. Yeah. And, you know, it's basically, I, I would do that, except I'm just not that motivated. But people who do do that, I mean, there's no question. If you're making, if ever, if monkeys are big and, and you just happen to, you know, damn, I got to get to Uno Zoo and film monkeys. And, you know, you can actually, if it's a topical thing, I mean, you can do it the same way as well. The que It's just a question of how badly you really want to go for the top views all the time and how. <laughs> well, I... The, the, the YouTubers do it too. Not always, but yes, you can do it. And they encourage us to do it. And that is what social media is built on. Yeah. Um, it's, it's the same with Facebook. It's the same with Instagram. There are some things which, mm. which rate really well and people want to get likes and they want to get mm. fans and friends and whatever else they... so mm. forth. So it's only going to be natural, right? Yeah. But I, I'm a big believer in that the reason that we have this great thing called YouTube is that we can make whatever we want and we can define ourselves by by what we make it mm. if you want to define yourself by making cat videos that's great no problem at all but that's not me yeah um more of a dog guy i i don't think <laughs> at the end of the day what are they gonna write on you in your obituary you know oh this guy had thirty thousand fans crazy cats yeah or are they gonna look back and they're gonna say this is this is hiko's body of work Gu guilty confession i've guilty confession yeah. so back in the early days of youtube when they used to actually rank you know like have clear rankings i was ranked channel number 60 in japan i think the highest 60. i got up to was like 50 at one point but when, when there were only like about 70 people actually making videos um but there was this thing you know sometimes people get very high up the totem pole and they start to think very high you know you can tell you go to parties and the highest ranked guy kind of there's a certain status and aura and I'd always say to the guy next to me, yeah, he's acting pretty cool, but, you, you know, he's like number six on the totem pole. He's pretty hyped there, but number five is a cat. It's Mugumogu. The world's most popular cat is a YouTube channel and was like number five or number three. And I'd always say, you know, yeah, they, they're pretty big, but, you know, there's a cat that's bigger than them, so I don't think they can break. <laughs> Everyone likes... There's going to be a cat there as well, <laughs> isn't there? But, um, so, when we go into... So, again, so you told the to go and get an idea. There's another thing as well. I have creative Japanese friends, and they actually... There's, there's a expression that I know a lot of uh, architects and creative people in Japan use which is that limitation is kind of an originator of creativity as well there is a yeah. there is a validity to that being given boundaries within For which sure. be, it, it pushes you to become creative and to have good ideas just being told as YouTube does go crazy with whatever you want can actually make it harder to be creative sometimes there is that I, th I think that creativity is one of these things which there are a lot of excuses out there yeah there are a lot of excuses like I arms. think we all yeah, just like arms. <laughs> and the, the one thing I really hate is when I hear people say, oh, I can't do this because I don't have this camera or something. Bullshit. iPhones these days shoot full HD. Yeah. You got a phone? Everyone's got a phone these days. If like you've got, <laughs> if you've, you've got an arm, you've got an iPhone. You know, the, there are ways around it. Mm. I, a couple of years ago, I actually went out and bought a Steadicam for my iPhone. Oh, a Merlin? Or a, it was, something I, cheaper? I, like look, a I'm not a tech geek like you. I can't remember the name. I just know that it's you a Steadicam. You have to meet a, finally meet a producer who has all this cool equipment and he doesn't even know what it is. He wasn't even sure if that care. camera was a I Sony or not. I don't care. I do not <laughs> give a shit what kind of equipment it is. Uh, if I've got it and I can use it and I can get a steady shot, I'm happy. Yeah, yeah. So... And I can get I found with the steady cam indeed you can get good stuff. And and people are doing that with GoPros right now as well, like crazy as well, because yeah. they've got the wider angle and you can actually that makes it look steadier. And yeah. they look great. And I so I, I think if just summing up what you're talking about there with creativity, for me, I think we all have different tools. Yeah. And YouTube is actually something where it doesn't really matter what yeah. your quality is. You don't need to be broadcast quality. Yeah. Um, all you need to do is make something that looks cool and people will forgive the quality. The only thing that maybe you really do need to worry about a little bit is the sound. I think sound is one thing people don't put up with the bad sound. sound. <laughs> well, and it's funny because again, so speaking as a YouTube geek creative process perspective, uh, everyone is so focused on video and bit rates and quality and appearance and everyone thinks about sound last. Most people don't do yeah. anything special with sound. They don't have a special mic or anything. They have a GoPro with a built-in action camera mic. Yeah, that stuff sucks. Hearing wind, I hate that. Of any sort, of any sort. And, yeah. you know, those things they capture, you know, all, all the sounds you don't want. Um, but, yes, and that's something I, come, I, I become wise to and it's what, it, it's what I struggle most with even here uh, in the space of setting up the sound. It drives me crazy. 
But you know, yeah, yeah, it's it, because again, we're all the we we're, we're fans who watch Discovery Channel or National Geo or History Channel or whatever, and we say, I want to shoot something exactly like that, and they do it with their handy cam, and they don't take a B roll, and they don't have a plan or whatever, and they come back and they edit it, and it kind of looks kind of crap, but they kind of get part way there. But they, then they see you do it, and they think, well, how did that guy do that? Well, that's exactly what you do, though. You you go, you decide, this is the kind of thing I want to do, yeah. and you try and imitate it, right? Well, that's what we're doing. Now, yeah. You're not just pushing the, the camera and going, oh, that's going to imitate it. I mean, you have to try and break it down well, a little bit. People are naive. People start with that. They start <laughs> with, I need more megapixels. This video, the quality is terrible. This is, yeah. I need more megapixels. That's where we start with. But people learn along the way. Okay, it's not just... But that. also, one other thing to talk about there is yeah. your audience. Yeah. Your audience comes to expect different things. Yeah. And I don't think... I think people are forgiving with the quality. If you don't have... Like, for instance, I always look at your channel. Yeah. And I see the way... <laughs> you think that everyone's very forgiving with my quality. You... you Keep adding little things. Yeah. You keep improving. That's what people want to see. They don't necess they, they want to see that you you give a shit. Mm. That they are your subscriber. I That's how they, I feel. I think they enjoy me trying new technical stuff and, and watching the shenanigans that ensue every time I do. But yeah, I know what you mean. I mean, it's people... pretty seamless now. When I watch when I watch your stuff, oh. it's pretty seamless. I mean, apart from the, um, are we on yet? <laughs> the awkward on yet? the awkward starts and the awkward endings are, are we on a feature of the show. Uh, and I tell you, you know, no, we still have we still have some nightmare times, and, and I feel like even saying that out loud, I'm tempting fate with this. Like, like we're not recording sound right now, and I'm going to go home and cry. But uh, <laughs> and that happens sometimes. But yeah, yeah, it does get crazy. But truth is, YouTube is a very well, the, the the fact is there are good. It's changing. There are people coming in who do use scripts, who do you know yeah. use proper sound who do plan stuff more and you can tell and most of the top channels that's a sign that you can see actually uh, and maybe that's a, that's the sort of thing that they have in common sometimes intuitively without any training they realize that's what you've got to do although look most people who don't have any training intuitively they just look purely at the visual and but but at the same time it is fun to learn and the seat of your pants lack of non-planning has its own fun yeah what well, <laughs> mediocrity to me is when you don't really try. You, no. Mediocrity is not about necessarily about the finished product if it looks crappy. <laughs> mediocrity is if you haven't, if you haven't tried. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not, certainly not talking about you here. Yeah. Uh, when I look at some videos, a lot of the time in, in my business, um, some of the people that I talk with, they'll look at someone else's video and they'll just go, oh, that's crap. He should have done this. He should have done that and so on. I don't really give a damn. The point is, has he got his story across? That's yeah. the first thing. Now, if I look at his next video and he's still doing exactly the same thing and he hasn't sort of learnt from his mistakes, then I think that's mediocrity. I think there is a thing that when someone's making videos, I remember watching a guy doing a blog once and saying, you know, you know, some people, they, 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 they spend all this time on their videos and editing the videos and looking at them and stuff like that. I, me, I just, I just say it, I shoot it out, I don't even watch it. You know, I don't come back. Once it's done, it's done. I forget about it. And the thing is, the video itself was crap. And this guy's bragging about how crap his videos were. And to me, it's almost like showing contempt for your viewers. You should at least watch your own videos back so you know what you look like. If you, if you don't enjoy watching your own videos, <laughs> then, then how do you expect anyone else to watch it? Hey, I've got to check the do. You know, I've got to check the hair is, is, is all good. Tell me, you, you made a point of not mentioning who that person was. I don't even but remember. But you put on an American accent. So <laughs> who, who was that? <laughs> I don't we've, know. We've narrowed it thing. down already. All I remember is this was like five years ago. I remember watching this guy, and he left an impression, but only because I unsubscribed him right away, and I can't remember. But that was, you know. But I did leave a comment saying, "Dude, if that, if you, you, if that's what you think of your viewers, that you don't even have to show them the respect to, yeah. to check your own stuff back." So, this is awesome. Again, uh, we're 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 we're, the we're on a clock here, so I'm going to move to the next episode. So it's back same time, same time, the same place next week more of uh, each producer versus geek youtuber and we're going to try to talk about more of these angles because there's endless angles and we can do this all night so come back soon peace boom boom so the next one that we've got is the why companies should take youtube seriously so this